kill ya. In September of 2014, this test footage promoting a future Popeye movie being developed by Sony Pictures Animation and directed by Hotel Transylvania and Samurai Jack's Gendy Tartakovsky was uploaded to YouTube. Get me out of here! <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Oil, I'll save you! Clear in this short teaser was not only how wonderfully snappy and cartoonish the animation style was, but also how much passion Tartakovsky had for this project. From a young child, I was already destined to make one movie, and that movie was Popeye. Even so much that when I first started animation, my very first teacher was a 90-year-old Popeye animator from the Flesher Studios, Gordon Sheehan. So I feel like it's destiny that's brought me here to Sony Pictures Animation to make Popeye an animated feature. As you might have noticed, this movie never came out. That was eight years ago now. In 2015, the movie was cancelled, with Tartakovsky saying in an interview with Cartoon Brew, Basically, we did a screening, and it was great. Internally, everyone was super happy with it. I think it was also exactly what King Features wanted. We had a great reaction. But this was also during the culmination of the Sony hack, and I could feel that something was going to happen soon. So after the screening, I didn't get an answer from them, which was weird because everybody was so positive. Usually we meet and talk and get notes, but they had a meeting of their own, and that was it. I just got a phone call afterwards telling me how great it was, which always makes me suspicious. If they just call to tell you it's great, there's something going on, because they didn't offer any notes. Later on, I personally went to see then Sony Pictures Entertainment executive Amy Pascal and said, look, I'm a big boy, I can take it, I just need some information. And she said, look, Gendy, we love you, but we just don't like Popeye. In 2017, Sony Pictures Animation released the movie that replaced Popeye. Huh. In 2020, it was reported that Tartakovsky was developing another Popeye movie with King Features, the syndicate that owns Popeye, but when asked about the movie in an interview with Decider, published on July 21st, 2022, Tartakovsky said, quote, Basically, it's dead. We were so successful with it, our test and the story we put together, but at the end of the day, they wanted a new Popeye, and I wasn't willing to go where they had in mind. It could have been good, but hey. And so we all once again resign ourselves to never getting to see this movie. Five days later, on July 26th, the entirety of this movie was leaked online, in the form of an hour and a half long animatic, complete with voice acting and early sound design. Oh. So yeah, I never thought I'd get to see it, but seven years after it was cancelled, I, me, the person talking to you right now, have actually seen Gendy Tartakovsky's Popeye movie. And it was delightful. Even in an unfinished state, the movie was engaging, well-directed and animated, and incredibly funny. Hold on there, Miss Oil! I'll get you down! Whoa! The animatics were obviously done by different people, so the art style varies from scene to scene, but throughout, the characters are very, very charmingly drawn, and the visual gags are sold superbly. Oh. Well, that was weird. Catching me off guard was the fact that Popeye is voiced by Tom Kenny. Tom Kenny, who has 541 acting credits, but who you might know as uh, the, um, this, this, the, the square yellow guy we all know and love. I had a moment of... Good morning, everybody! Oh. It's a beautiful day! Wait, is that Tom Kenny? Dolphin would say... <laughs> yeah, that's Tom Kenny. But even though it was a little distracting hearing how Spongebobby his Popeye voice was at times, he was very well cast, and every now and then he would nail the classic Popeye inflection. Don't! Hey, what's the big idea? I had to look up who was playing Olive Oil on Twitter since the animatic lacked any credits, but I figured out it was Grey Delisle, and she was a standout too. Points all around. So overall, this Popeye movie, which wasn't finished, looked great, sounded great, and was extremely funny. After I finished it, I was a little surprised to find the movie actually had a listing on Letterboxd, so I gave it four stars and put it on my best of 2022 list, only for that listing to be removed from the site a few minutes later. Presumably because of an influx of reviews directing people to an illicitly shared piece of Sony Pictures property. But I have no moral qualms recommending you see this movie, since it's never going to be released officially. This is a great movie. Don't get it twisted, it's not that it might have been a great movie, this is a great movie that just happens to have been released under unusual, shady, and completely unprofitable circumstances. 
And it got me wondering if there are other unreleased movies that exist to this level of completion, a level at which it is perfectly enjoyable to watch, if not in some ways preferable. I mean, I'm not here to be a snob about 3D animation, you've heard that enough, but I'm always down to watch the 2D animatic version of something I've seen in 3D. And speaking from experience, I wrote a pilot for an animated series which was fully animated before the project got canned, and as far as I can tell, it's never going to see the light of day. It's not hard to imagine that this happens all the time. Pixar's Newt might be out there somewhere, so might Me and My Shadow from DreamWorks, but besides that, Movies that I've never heard of are probably languishing on somebody's hard drive somewhere. And if this one was this good, a lot of them are probably really good. But what it's important to notice and remark upon is that I have immediately started romanticizing this. There is a deep-rooted part of me that feels a sense of injustice at Lost Media and believes that all art should be preserved. But also there's the hipstery part of me that finds art that has been overlooked, lost, or forgotten particularly appealing. And because of all that, I'm probably drawn more to a Popeye movie which wasn't released than a Popeye movie that was. I mean, am I going to go watch Popeye's Voyage The Quest for Pappy? No. I'm not. Because I've already seen it! But with that said, I do genuinely think the movie that this Popeye is, is in a lot of ways more interesting than the Popeye movie it might have been. I've never seen a feature-length animatic like this, so it naturally had a kind of novelty to it that I wouldn't have gotten watching a finished film. And one notable thing that I need to address that Tartakovsky said in the original teaser was The voices are all temp. The movie we have, where Tom Kenny voices Popeye and Great Allele voices Olive Oil, is a pretty great movie. But Tom Kenny most likely wouldn't have been Popeye in the finished film. Great Allele almost definitely wouldn't have been Olive Oil in the finished film. They both would have been played by celebrities, who, it's entirely plausible, wouldn't have done a good job. Not gonna name any names, but this has happened before. In that way, at least, I think this Popeye movie is probably better for not having been released than it would have been if it had. I don't know how I would have felt about this movie if I had seen it the way it was intended to be released. As someone who liked Popeye as a kid, a few adaptations of things I liked as a kid from around this time come to mind. Movies like Tintin, or The Little Prince, or The Peanuts Movie. All of which have their strengths, all of which are fun to watch in their own right, and all of which bring a really interesting approach to translating something which I was previously invested in into film, but none of which really had enough staying power to become classics, and none of which I rewatch very often. This is a Little Prince movie, not the Little Prince movie. This is a Peanuts movie, not the Peanuts movie. And I don't think there's anything actually wrong with that. More art in the world isn't ever a bad thing. Most of the time. And I hope it goes without saying that it would have been better if this Popeye movie had been finished and released, because all the people who put all this work and passion into it deserve that. What I mean is that adaptations are always interesting to me, but some feel definitive in a weird way that others don't. We have had a few really compelling adaptations in the past decade or so, movies which feel definitive not insofar as they comprehensively represent everything that made their source material great, but in that they contributed something unique and interesting enough that we keep talking about them. I don't know for sure if this Popeye movie would have been that kind of a Popeye movie. I personally think it might have been, because Popeye's a character I've always liked, and this would have been the first really quite good movie he had starred in. No, I didn't forget. But I think what I'm trying to say is, what's the point of lamenting what we don't have when we can instead celebrate what we do have? Not what might have been, what is. We get to see a version of this movie now, and the version that we got is really great.